So here what I have is I have a whole bunch of copper water complexes. And I'm going to add various ligands to them. See whether they form precipitates or if they form complexes. So here is ammonia. We have a little bit of ammonia here, a little bit of ammonia there, here, here. Okay. So I'm actually going to go ahead and add a little bit more of ammonia so we can actually see this pretty well. You can see as that I add more, I can go from a complex or from a precipitate to a complex. So what I'm going to now do is I'm going to check that against the various following things. I'm going to add phosphate to this one. I'm going to add chloride to this one. Sulfide to this one. And hydroxide. And oxalate. Okay. And what we can see is that they have all remained the same. And so the ammonia is the stronger ligand of all those things. Now in the next batch, I'm going to do phosphate. Now for this, I'm just going to do a drop. I don't know how well you can tell, but there's a little bit of a precipitate going on there. The way to tell that is to put some writing underneath. So for this, I can see through, but for this, it gets cloudy. So you can tell that it's being blocked as opposed to clear. Okay. So when I put the phosphate in, now I'm going to go ahead and try and test that against everything else. So I'm going to put a drop of chloride, and nothing changes. I'm going to put a drop of sulfide. And here it looks like we have something going on. So it looks like the sulfide is kind of the victor between the two. Hydroxide. Again, it looks like we might have had a slightly different precipitate form. We'll have to check that later. And oxalate. Okay, so next we're going to try adding chloride. When I add the chloride to this, what you'll see is that nothing will happen. And that is because the water is the stronger ligand than the chloride in this case. Okay. For the sulfide, I now have to check sulfide. And I'm going to check that against hydroxide. And the oxalate. Okay, and I'm going to go ahead and stir these. So it looks like the sulfide is taking precedence over the hydroxide, but not the oxalate. The oxalate has changed this compared to what it was before. And then lastly, I've got hydroxide. Versus the oxalate. So that is definitely challenging to tell the difference between, but I'm seeing a different color I'm going to go ahead and get a new stirring rod here. A new one here. So it looks as though the hydroxide and the oxalate look identical to me. Uh, so that's indicative that that was not being replaced and the hydroxide would be the stronger leg. Okay. So in this lab, what we're doing is we're looking at ligands surrounding copper ions, and two things are happening. One is we're forming complex ions. The other is that we're forming precipitates. So the ammonia formed a complex ion, and you can tell by the clarity of the solution. So, so if it's not murky, if it's clear, even though it's a different color, what we're forming is a complex ion. In this case, we're going to take four ammonias, since we have a two plus charge, so we're going to take double the charge, and we're going to put those four ligands around the copper ion to form a complex ion. Now the total charge of this is the charge of this and the charge of these. These are neutral and this is two plus, so the total is a two plus charge applied to the entire ion. For a precipitate, however, we have a two plus charge and a minus charge. That solid, that chunkiness that we're seeing is, the, is an ionic compound. Uh, it's a salt. So what I'm going to do here is just simple basic charge balancing. So I'm going to form my precipitate differently than my ligands. I'm not going to, or my complex ions, because I'm not going to end up with an ion. I'm going to end up with a, uh, a solid crystal lattice where I'm looking at 
charge, or charge balance between the carb, copper and the hydroxide ions. So for what we did next was we then took ammonia and hydroxide and put them both with the copper. So then we're looking at a competition between copper hydroxide and ammonia to see whether it will form the copper ammonium complex, ammonia complex, or will it form the precipitate? So when we mix this, we had a royal bluish color for this. And for this, we had a light blue precipitate. So to evaluate the strength of the ligand interaction between these ammonias and the hydroxides with the copper, we can look at whether it turns to be a light blue precipitate or if it turns the royal blue color. And then what we can do is we can say, whichever color it had turned, that is my stronger ligand, that is my more stable compound or ion. And so therefore we can kind of organize these based on who wins what battle between the various ligands.